Welcome back to this month's uh, Four Ways episode and uh, it's a proposition from Richard and uh, it's really um, fun, interesting and uh, at the same time challenging to uh, challenging um, uh, project and um, the project is what can we do with 6 inch cube now this one actually is my backup it's oak uh, beam from old wooden house which is quite common here in croatia uh, but it's actually five inches and that's why i kept it as a backup in case uh, my other one didn't work out and uh, it's actually the other one is quite interesting so I, I did my best to to justify it and uh, put it to uh, like through drawing and everything in quite short time less than a month actually and uh, because I had other stuff to do as well and uh, it turned out actually quite good and I'm quite pleased with it so let me bring you in closer and you'll see my solution to this month's project my solution to Richard project is this it's a bowl and a lid uh, i call it um, a snack set and uh, you're probably wondering uh, is this all is this everything that you come up with six inch cube and uh, as the old commercials um, went uh, but there is more uh, if i open up the lid you'll see inside three more bowls they're all nested and uh, I had some trouble with it and as you see in the video uh, but that's not all there is more so if I take the smallest and uh, you can see it's sort of, uh, sort of a different shape it has a foot and uh, the lid here the outside this bead uh, on the outside it's actually a foot so if I turn it around you can see here now still have a remnants of the oil uh, still have to wipe it off this bowl fits in the into this and now it's a tray you can put some um, I don't know berries or something around it and uh, you have so one two and three bowls to go with it so I'm going to try to speed it up up to a point where I uh, finish turn these as it's most important part I guess so this obviously goes back together like this now my intention was to make it fit all like this second bowl but life has other plans and uh, this outside bead here is actually a uh, ridge to stop it from uh, fall off the lid right so this is my cube six by six inches uh, it's walnut and uh, it's green so a lot of moisture in it now I'm looking for the best grain pattern and uh, it's all sort of different color and what I would like actually is have both of this darker and this greener stuff uh, in bowls so I think I'll go uh, with this for the top top and I can draw here so I want to remove for the top uh, 20 mil So I got one blank, two blanks and the lid. So this is the lid, top lid.
So that's one. Smaller one, bigger one. Well, I want to get from the bigger one a core that will fit inside the smaller one, and from the smaller one, core should fit into this one. So it's a little bit of <laughs> play around. So let's press the core out this one. So I managed to straighten sort of one of the curved McNaughton blades which I got used. They were extremely bent and ruined. So I want to needle it somewhere around here. And I don't think this will warp too much in the drawing process. So I have to risk it. So what I managed to get out is relatively thin balls. Now I don't expect them to warp too much uh, because it's not uh, completely wet wood. It's been in the field like a year and a half so before I got it and that was two years ago maybe. So this core should fit in this one and this core into this one now just we need to hollow this out so i can dry it in the microwave and hopefully these won't distort much So I got my lid and the bowls dry out. Um, I used microwave every day for almost two weeks, something like that. And uh, usually I put like uh, on minute and a half or even two times a day, depends. Uh, so they are dry, they didn't move, like I said, all that much. So. Okay, so let's find out the best way to start with these. So what I would advise if you're doing something similar is to start out with uh, your rough turn balls separately. Do not core them out to try to save the material. Uh, I had to do it like this because uh, the cube is like the parameter to what you can get out of it, what you can use. So. I'm trying to make this work. I can fit these two, let's say, pretty much the way I want, but these two are already set in, sort of. So what, I'm, what I'll probably do first is make these two sort of fit. So first things first is to make or chew up the tenon because some of these are quite small it was nice it was fine for uh, uh, rough turning but I want a little bit more uh, grip let's say now and uh, what I can do is I need a tailstock and a piece of wood here so I'll just chew this up 
piece of wood here that have a big hole in the bottom which can reduce my height of overall ball so I'll try to center it as best I can I'm using a spindle gouge to cut the, to chew up the tenon and um, now I'm also planning this and uh, figuring things out as I'm go so Okay, that will be enough. Now for this smaller one I have some sort of different idea in mind, which you'll see later if everything pans out okay. So that will be plenty to hold. What I'm going to do is true up each bowl and see how can I progress. I want to chew up the rim. Okay, and chew up the inside. A little bit more. Okay. a little bit more and I'll throw up the outside and we'll have somewhere to, to start now at this stage I'll just put a straight So now that's true, a little bit more here, but I can deal with that. Um, now let's see if I take the inner dimension. Like I said, bear with me, I'm doing this the first time as well trying to find the best way to do this so, okay so this is the inside and this is now I don't measure it here on the long grain here I measure it across the grain because that's the narrowest part and um, I'm right on almost as the diameter of the ball which means that I can go slightly more here on the inside. So I went all the way through everything inside. Now I have a diameter the, this inside diameter as long as as big as my bowl that fits in and uh, if I want to make that gap like this I think I'll have enough room now just before I go any further I'm going to check the depth
Okay, so on this bowl, I'll have to include the foot as well and just lightly throw up the rim so it will fit just right in which means that this one also will have to be a minimum shaping and uh, you know what I'll reduce slightly this rim so I'm not in such a low tolerance Okay, I think that will, that will be enough. Now what I'm thinking, I can actually finish this inside. Okay, I think I'll put uh, like a big bead here. So at this stage, I just want to chamfer the, the one edge. Okay, so I want the ball on the inside, the smaller one, to be perhaps this big. Okay. So I'll pop this one in. Draw up the rim. Now I'm taking my time because I only have one shot at this, so I'm going to transfer the measurement here. So that will be the outside. So I'm going to set that in. Again, as little as I can from the bottom. It now is height. Okay, I have around two mil to play around and once I place this one in that's roughly that What I marked here is the thickness of the wall on the bigger ball, so I'm just going to slightly trim that as well. Okay, uh, now I can again sand the inside. Okay, so the inside is done on this one. This will be a nice pattern once it's oiled. Okay. So obviously I'm still high. And this ridge is in the way, but I'm getting there. And 
what I will do, I'll pop this back in. And just uh, thin it down a bit and run over. Okay, so I have two of them done and this should be right. Okay, so eventually when I just lightly clean up the bottom of the smaller bowl, it should fit uh, at least height-wise nice and nicely just like I said I'll have to live with with the bigger gap here in between these two go with the third one if you're making these separately as they should be done uh, then you will obviously like I did with these two uh rough them uh, rough turn them the size that you want that you need so okay uh, so just skim the the rim just to be uh clean no more like so and uh, on the outside I just want to true it up so I get the maximum diameter so go straight across and just see where we are with the, the smallest ball so this is the small, biggest diameter I could get and I'm here so I know I can't change the diameter of this so just have to go with the wall thickness for these edges so it's not much easier to sand later okay so the third one is done also it's a little bit down and it could bring on the all of the pieces the height down but should I do it or or not? <laughs> no, but I'm just going to leave it. And I don't want to reduce the height of these bigger balls because of this one. So back into check. Which 
through the top again. Now I can set the height. I'm going to set it for this smaller one, obviously. And that would be 33 mil, which comes down to, so I can take three more mil at the top here. You always, if you're reducing height like this, you always leave uh, wood in front, so you know how much you've taken off. Like so. So if I go with the biggest diameter, just want to see where that fits inside the bowl. The biggest diameter will be roughly here, and that will transfer to here, so I can reduce that. So maybe somewhere out there. See where that fits here. Okay, that will be ideal, I think. Yep. same thickness so that's just right in So I have the inside done. Now we'll focus it on the outside and I'll move the camera a bit. What I have here is a piece of maple for a jam chuck. And this will be just right at the edge of, a, edge of it. Okay, that's almost done. That's a nice fit. Now I can finish it here, or I'll try to incorporate the foot as well. light cut ok 
okay and I usually put something here okay Okay, that's nice. There we go. Okay, so ball number one all finished. Now to see where this one fits somewhere above this. Remove this corner so that I have more access to the to the rim. I'll leave the foot as it is and just start shaping this. This now here sounds a little bit thin. You can probably hear it. It sounds it's not extremely thin, but it's thin. So you just have to. You know what? I'm just going to check how this feels. Now I have. Not too much wood, so... Okay, so I have... Maybe you can see it. I have around 2-3 mil to reduce the, the foot. But I don't have a lot of wood at the bottom, so that will have to do. And I'll just shear scrape, shear cut with the gouge. Somebody did ask me why I don't have those big jaws. The what what are they called? Uh, cold jaws, something like that. Um, I don't find them uh, like you just have to, you or you will either buy a separate chuck for it. Uh, it's not you know just convenient to take it off and on. Um, on your chuck so now the jam chuck like this works beautifully especially if you can get the, the ball out there we go ok 
Okay, so number two done. Let's see how it fits. It's, it would be nicer if it had slightly wider base. But try to align it. So it's just a little bit under the the rim. Okay, so let's see where this smaller one fits, so that will be somewhere around here. So, just lightly over the bottom and finish shaping this. Light cut and make a decor. Oops. Let's see a ruler. There we go. So, ball number three. And this little guy. So, somewhere around this reach. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So just, just grab a spindle gouge. So I want to just minimally chew up the the foot and I'm going to make it around here. I wanna straight foot here and you'll see on the lid why Instead of making the reverse jam chuck and going through that process all over again, I just open up the inner jars, jaws and grab it with those to reduce the rim size down instead of the, because I don't have any more space down there.
should be it. So the balls are finished. Okay, so let's start out with the top. I put the spacer here. I'm going to mount it on the screw chuck. So something like this. is the biggest ball I have and I want this to be over to lid so just enough room to to make some decoration but first I'm going to inset this this edge with a scraper which is dull so hone it I remove the old burr Now this doesn't have to be incredibly deep, so this is around 4 mil. Position here. Oops. Now this has to be slightly in. in front of the tripod so I had to move back the camera and just keep hitting it keep hitting the tripod Now, since this spindle couch is due to sharpening on the grinder, uh, before that I just put a burr up and uh, it will be now as a sheer scraper. You see how the shavings fly off. And I'll use it as detail work on this lid. this fits over and it does now this is now dimension for uh, the foot of this small smallest ball and I'm just going to bore this out with a uh, scraper Thank 
Okay, that's fine. And I'd like to do something with this edge. Uh, I can grab a ball gouge. and now I can expand the jaws inside this bead nice and true sure. do is some sort of a decoration here maybe uh, a bead here and uh, connected here to this round over here just remove this first so this is the new gouge the Kais gouge a slight dome here just want this point to be lower than this let's see what we done so I oiled it so you can see nice stripes and nice foot for the lid when we flip it over now you can see the inside the smallest ball has that tenon which then fits into this plate then we have the small ball bigger one and the largest quite nice set and now you can see a little bit better with the oil the stripes on this walnut it actually started to decay so at the right time I process it so I still have a little bit oil seeping out just oil it so that's the big one
quite interesting pattern. The smallest. And the lid. So I still have to wipe off some of the excess oil. And the outside or the bottom depends on the way you you look at it. So nice curve. Two beads. This bead is as well the the foot. And it fits over nicely. So don't forget to uh, check out Richard, Mike and Sam's project as well. The links are down below. And uh, thank you for watching and support what we do. And uh, see you at next month's project, which actually is my project. So should be fun.